So I've had David Price on the squad for probably over a week, but you guys know how it is. You can go days, maybe a week, maybe even two weeks if you are an unlucky bastard. You just need to get lucky enough to be able to pitch with the guys you want to be able to pitch with. So this is the debut for Price. It is about time because I have been waiting for this guy to come out on the mound and start wheeling and dealing. I always pitch with Cindergard. And it's funny because when I first got Cindergard, I was praying to everything in the sky that I would be able to pitch with him every single game. Well, not every single game, but uh, I was hoping that I could pitch with him just right after I got him. But then I had to wait. I literally had to wait, no joke, probably close to a week. Before, I wasn't playing, you know, hours on end every day, but I could. I was playing a couple day. I was playing a couple games a day if I can speak correctly, and it took me about a week before I was able to pitch with Syndergaard and then Price. It was kind of the same thing, not as long, but a couple. Yeah, I had him a week ago, but I was grinding out innings with uh, Twins players in Diamond Dynasty for a little bit, so that was over the weekend. So I wasn't really playing Diamond Dynasty over the weekend, so I played a couple games probably of head-to-head -head since I've gotten Price. And finally he's on the team, and somebody has yet to stop Barry Larkin. The guy has yet to be stopped. He needs to be locked in a cage and never to be released again because he cannot be stopped. That is the only way he can stop that man is to lock him in a cell to never be let out again. The guy is just going out there and he is he's getting multiple hits a game, home runs included, and it is just too it is too much. The guy is going ballistic on the field and it's kind of unfortunate because I just got Rod Carew and I've been liking the Xander Bogarts, the Diamond Bogarts I've been using the past couple games and ever since Barry Larkin has been on the team, he's just been going off. And Bogarts has been playing pretty damn good, too, since he's been on the team. So, Carew's been playing good, too, but he's only been playing good the first couple games I played with him. Ever since, not so much. So, I'd rather have Barry Larkin in the field than Carew anyway, even though Carew does have better... He has better contact stats. I wouldn't say he has better stats overall, but he has better contact hitting stats. And I'm pretty sure the fielding stats are very similar but I'd rather have Barry Larkin just because he's been going he's been going absolute in, he's been going insane at the plate and he's been making all the plays in the field hasn't made an error yet in the field hasn't done anything wrong he's like Carl Crawford man flashback Crawford both of them can't do anything wrong I I can't take them off the roster and it's it's starting to put me in a little bit of a dilemma because I got a lot of middle infielders now, Bogarts included, since he's turned to a diamond. I just wanted to try him out a couple games ago when he was he went three for four, I think, in the first game I played with him with a home run. And he's put up a couple home runs since then too. And Barry Larkin is just is just is just I don't even I don't even know what as I as I'm sitting here stuttering, I don't even know what to say because the guy is such a beast. And as I say, look at this guy! Look at this guy! I, I'm just talking about Barry Larkin in the background. He comes up to the dish and gets another base hit. And then Beltre is following up with a Jack Moonshot to center field himself. This was a day for the offense. This was definitely 100% a day for the offense in my favor. Uh, lately, I've been kind of going off in games, man. I've been just going, I've been going insane too. At the plate in the past couple games. Look at Bogarts trying to send one down the right field line. But he catches up to it. So I got about 8 hits so far. Just through the 3 innings so far in this game. Top of the 3rd. Price is still doing the dirty on the mound man. This guy actually. He throws harder than I would have thought. I mean the velocity and arm strength aren't the best. But I mean he, he's throwing 96 on the gun. That isn't too shabby right there. He was definitely putting some heat up on the gun and yeah he's, just, he's been he was playing he was pitching very good this game as he gets another K on the high heater right there that's where the heater was coming into play because this guy couldn't catch up to it if I was throwing it up in the strike zone and then Fisk I don't know what to do about Fisk either because I've been getting recommended to get Yogi Berra but Carlton Fisk has been he's been literally one of the best hitters at the play too since I've gotten him as well 
And what a surprise. Barry Larkin doesn't get a hit. That is the biggest surprise I've ever seen in my life. Barry Larkin doesn't come to the dish and hit a home run or just line one 100 miles an hour up the gut. But Carlton Fisk, I don't know. The only thing I can complain about with Fisk is the arm strength. He doesn't throw a lot of guys out. The blocking is 97 on Fisk, which is very important if you ask me. You want to get some guys chasing in the dirt. Fisk will always block the ball. You never. I don't even think you guys have seen Fisk uh, get a pass ball or anything since I've gotten him. And he's hitting about three. He's hitting over 300 since I've gotten him. And that's just from playing head to head. So I think I'm going to hold on to him for a little bit. But the next guy I'm probably going to grind out and get in uh, Diamond Dynasty is definitely Yogi Berra. Matt Holiday is definitely off the list. A lot of people have been. It was weird because. Uh, I went, not a month ago, but a couple weeks ago, I would say people were recommending. Not the same people, but different people were recommending me to get Matt Holiday. And some guys were saying he was the best left fielder in the game. And I don't even think I saw his stats. So I was like, alright, let me see what this guy's got. His hitting stats are good. The fielding isn't the best, though. The arm strength is like 70-something, I'm pretty sure. But man, I already got Flashback Crawford and left. Flashback Crawford has 87, 88 fielding, I'm pretty sure. Plus the reaction is in the 90s, I'm pretty sure. The only thing with Crawford, like I've said many times, is the arm strength, but that literally hasn't come into play at all. That has not been a factor since I've gotten Crawford. Plus, I already got Ichiro and Gwyn in center and right, so those guys got guns out there too, so it doesn't really matter. Crawford is staying. He can always catch up to the balls, hitting the gap and everything too, so I'm going to keep him definitely for a bit, but Yogi Berra is definitely going to be the guy I grind out to get next, and I don't even know what the hell... Gwyn was doing right here that could have been my fault I don't know if I should have tried to leap at the wall right there to get that ball but it went off me and that guy I was a gift that was a wrapped gif gift that was a wrapped gif I just said a wrapped gift uh, for this guy as he gets the inside the park home run I like that's just this that is a head scratcher right there I have no idea what I was doing but that didn't come back to haunt me too bad I mean, I still got a sizable lead. I don't know if this guy was frustrated or what since he decides to plunk each row. I don't think that was intentional because the count was 2-2 or something. But then, man, I don't know what the hell's going on. But sometimes it seems like people are, especially when you steal second, I find, you will look about 50 feet safe. They will literally tag the side of your body. You'll slide feet first. They'll tag the side of your body. You'll get called out every single time. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell, man? I look a million feet safe, and you get called out every time. That is rare, too, to see Ichiro step or Ichiro try and steal, and he gets thrown out. Okay, so this guy was definitely frustrated because he does plunk Beltre, and then right after Fielder popped out, I'm pretty sure Gwyn is driving one to the gap. It gets by his right fielder, and then now I got two guys in scoring position for Bogarts, and this guy has been just clutch as hell but as I say that he's going down on K's this guy put Fernando Rodney in the game too so he was throwing heat and he was also throwing some off-speed pitches too so it was tricking me a little bit but Price is still wheeling and dealing on the mound the guy can't be stopped I don't know how many hits I've given up so far as this guy gets another one Larkin probably should have came down with that but anyway uh, Price probably only has Four, five hits given up, I'm pretty sure at this point. I don't have no idea what that. This guy must have been trolling later in this game. This guy was frustrated. He didn't want any more to do with this because he was doing some weird-ass shit late in this game. What is it? Bottom of the eighth now. This guy pinch hit Dexter Fowler, and he decided to leave him in the game. This guy definitely gave up around the seventh inning or so, when I was having a field day with this guy on the mound. Carlton Fisk drives one down the left field line, then Ichiro was stepping to the dish, driving one down the right field line, so I got two guys in scoring position for guess who? Barry Larkin is at it yet again, driving one to the left center gap for the two ribbies and the triple in the process. I have no idea. This guy was waving the white towel, the white flag in the seventh inning or so. And then Gwyn stepping up to the plate himself, trying to go up in the strike zone. Driving one to right center right there. So I'm getting another triple as I'm trying to score. Uh, I'm trying to score the runner all the way from first, I'm pretty sure. And then look at this guy just running around. Definitely gave up right there as Bogarts just grounds out to end this inning. So I'm definitely putting Price back on the mound for the for the top of the ninth, 
because he was wheeling and dealing. And first batter, he's laying one down. I have no, I have no idea what was going on there. I was running around with my head up my ass on that bun right there. But this guy's still running around just being an idiot. Didn't want any more to deal with this. So I thought he was going to lay one down again. So I'm throwing at his face. And he pulls it back. Ended up getting a warning in the process right there. But he's looking to lay one down again. And he does. But as he lays it down, I'm just getting the force out at second base. So last batter of the game. I'll just let Vaskersian handle it. Now the runner breaks for the plate. Oh, and this is in the dirt. And they will put the tag on him. He's out stealing home. And this ball game is over. What a knucklehead move that was. And as we wrap things up here, what do you say we name this guy right here as the recipient of our Tops Player of the Game Award? Yeah, maybe a little disappointing that he could only get three quarters of the cycle, especially since he got the two hardest ones out of the way. But all in all, still a great offensive performance.